Hey everyone, my name is Tally D, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are playing Without a Voice. I don't know much about this game. I don't know really it a while back ago, and I'm just now getting to, getting around to playing it. So, no idea what it's about. No, I just know it's it, it's an anime game. And that's all I know. No idea anything besides that. So, you and I, we're both just gonna sit here. Or, you know, you do whatever, and we're both going to play this game. So it's going to be great. Please know the following game contains disturbing themes and explosive content. Violence, graphic of death, homophobia, incestophilia, ew, and codependency. Alrighty. My cold, cruel destiny hath thee within her grasp. Thou may endeavor bravely, dear, to change thy path. The fate cares not which twisted road you choose to take. You dance atop her palm with every choice you make. Day one. Okay, I like it. It was a moaning like any other. The tragedy soon to unfold would affect so few people that time would swiftly forget it. For those involved, however, that morning was a maelstrom, drawing them each closer and closer still. It all began innocently enough, with a certain exiled princess in a terrible predicament. Ah, oh, oh dear, I've run out of firewood. Whatever shall I do? If only I noticed yesterday. This has caught me quite unwarious. The ex-princess in question was named Cassidy, and she was the eldest child of the kingdom of Vormir. What's that you say? You've never heard of Vormir? What you mean? I'm all over the news. One shouldn't be surprised. This all happened long before the universe summoned you into existence. The next shipment isn't due for a little while yet. But I cannot wait. I won't be able to cook or do laundry without a fire. How did you laundry with a fire? So long had the princess had been living in this cottage alone that she'd taken to talking to herself just to feel less lonely. Determined to gather some wood before sundown, Cassidy grabbed a hatchet and some linen and then quitted the place. Once outside, she paused, considering for the umpteenth time whether it would be best for her to lock the door. No one will come in anyway. My brother's agents never enter, and no one else travels this deep into the woods. Confusing herself so, Cassidy turned away and headed into the forest to begin her mission. Unfortunately, her determination and willpower were short lived. Hmm, as I thought, firewood isn't just lying on the ground, just waiting to be picked up. That's kind of how firewood is, but you're in a forest. How can you not just look around like. Fire, I'm sorry, but firewood is always in the woods. Though she brought the hatchet, she foolishly hoped she wouldn't have to use it. Faced with so many different types of trees, most of them quite large, she was unsure how to proceed. <laughs> Princesses! <laughs> now that I think about it, how much firewood do I usually use at once? Oh, the more I try to remember, the more adult I get. Perhaps I'll just subsist some fruits and fungus until the next crater rests. A timely stomach growl quickly put a stop to such pains. Cassidy let out a sigh. For now then, I shall return to my favorite place. It always brings me peace. That place holds some magic. I've always felt I'm sure I shall be able to think of something once I'm there. Her spirit restored, Cassidy hifted her linen satchel a little higher. It was not long until she would be comfortable again, she thought. Oh, <laughs> princesses! Don't even know how to get the firewood. Why, you're as radiant as ever. There were many views to take pleasure in, in this forest, but this one in particular always brought her delight. Though she had lived here now for some seasons, the tree before her seemed never to change. I don't know much about the wisteria. Are they meant to stay in bloom year, year round? Perhaps the winters here are mild. Wisteria shall weather, not when flakes of winter fall. Yet all must someday perish while heeding nature's call. But nature yields no, not power o'er us all. 
A clear wind sham voice caught Cassidy's attention. Cassidy's heart stuck in her throat as she followed the sound and caught sight of a woman sitting there. She had never before seen a woman so breathtakingly beautiful. Okay, first of all, girl, would you get your dress? I love that. I love the sleeves. I, I don't know. I like dresses with sleeves. It's so cute. My, <clears throat> my apologies for... She sounds like the same. My apologies! <laughs> I can't. My apologies for interrupting your poem, madam. It, it was only a couplet. You did not interrupt so much as improve it. Oh, then all the better. But it is not safe to be so deep in the wood, Terry not. I live here. It is quite safe, I assure you. I dare say I have lived here much longer than you have. No harm has ever come to me in these woods. Perhaps our experience is merely dear for I am a princess with guards and you are merely a, wo a woman in a black tight dress. Certainly, I concerned your point. Cassidy paused a long while, unsure of how to carry on the conversation. How strange. I used to make small talk with all the courtiers as if it was nothing. Has time truly affected me so? You, you say you live here? I do. I have never seen you. I'm quite sure of it. I'll remember someone like you. Whereabouts do you live, if you do not mind me asking? How do your stones throw from where we stand now? A stone throw? That is highly sp- A stone's throw? How could that be? How could that be? I suppose she does not wish to expose where she lives to an utter stranger. That is reasonable. She seems to be quite on her guard. I envy your view of this lovely place. Do not envy me. What could that mean? How draw- Oh, where are my manners? My name is Cassidy. I, too, live nearby. You may call me Eloen. Eloen. What a lovely name. Besides, besides, I was already aware that you lived nearby. What? How? I have seen you before, albeit from a distance. You come here often. Oh dear, I must have been making a pretty fool of myself. I am sorry that you've had to witness that. Cassidy thought back to all the complaining she'd done under this tree. And all the times she sullied herself trying to gather fruit, there are many other truly mortifying memories. She stared at the ground in shame. Oh, I'm such a girl. Oh, gone to the forest, start to cry and mope around. Oh, I'm so human. It's unbearable of how human I am. When she looked up, however, alone and was smiling. Cassidy felt her tension wane. So what brings you back to this place? I wanted to call myself. For I am human. Calm yourself. What for? What could possibly cause you distress? What a sour tone. Does she think I just daydream and lays about all day? Many things. I'll have you know that at this very moment, minute, I am on a mission that might mean the difference between life and death. Oh, and yet you dally here? What could this mission involve? Pray tell. Hmm, I see my prince is not wanted here. I shall return to my search forthwith. Just as she was about to turn away and leave Eloin and a wisteria tree behind, Cassidy heard Eloin laugh softly. It was a bewitching sound. I see I have offended my lady. No offense was meant, I can assure her. Really? Truly, I would never wish to cause you pain. Tell me of your mission. I have run out of firewood. <laughs> Upon hearing this, Eloin stood up and dusted herself off. Allow me to be a service. Oh no, I can't possibly imp- Please, this tree suffers so much every time you shed your tears and frustrations upon it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would be in the same place. Like, how do you respond to that? Yet, despite her abrasive words, Eloin was tirelessly helpful. It was she who taught Cassidy to gather smaller bits of kindling and to use a hatchet when approved and sufficient. If you wrap these smaller branches together, they shall burn just fine. I see. Oh, I am certainly glad not to have a, to chop down a whole tree. I was worried about that. Yes, once felled, a tree can never rise again. Take of them their fruit, their branches, but spare them their roots and lifeblood. Lifeblood? Do trees have blood? This forest is quite old, you know. 
I wish you would stay forever this way, but man has trouble leaving things be. The disparity between a low and indifferent expression and the Biden count of voice make Hasley hot. Can I not? S I can save at all. Can I save? <gasps> I c Oh, good. Eh, save. Empty slot. Okay. Ah, return. The disparity between a low and indifferent expression and the Biden count of voice make Hasley hot. Hey. She must have had a bad experience. She must love trees. She must love trees. I agree. Nature is wonderful, isn't it? At times, it can be. This is rather awkward. What does she mean by that? The two continue through the forest, gathering wood and passing the time with easy conversation. As they walked leisurely, the sun began to sink. So too did the satchel wood of Ocasity's soldier shag. It seems that you've got plenty of wood now. Surely that will be enough? Uh, you're right! The time had caught quite gotten away from the exiled princess. Now their, their afternoon together was coming to an end. Cassidy was afraid. Afraid and hopeful, which was perhaps more dangerous still. Then? Excuse me, Miss Lowen. Yes? Might I? That is, might we meet again? You've no idea how happy I am to meet another person living in this wood. And and a woman at that. Yet the expression of Lauren's face showed that she had, in fact, the same idea. I was about to suggest the same. You might find me in this area most afternoons. I see. Then, until tomorrow. Would that we meet so soon, my lady? With that, Lauren bowed and left. Her steps make almost no sound. What a graceful woman. Not just beautiful, but elegant and smart. As she walked back to the cottage, so filled with thoughts of alone with her, he with her head, that Cassidy forgot all about her fatigue and the weight of her burden. She certainly is opinionated, but she must have so much exper more experience living independently than I. I hope I am not a bother to her. And with that, the once princess returned home, blissfully unaware of the roots that were at this very moment grabbing hold of her heels and pulling her beneath. It is said, a fool repeats his days, changing not, but expecting change. I posit these men are by routine hogtied. They expect not, and are by not satisfied. Day two. Okay, I really like this. This is fun. There is a sort of mel melancholy one feels when closing a book for the final time. Feeling his last words wash over you as you leave its word and return to your own life. It was a new that Cassidy had grown used to. In her former life, she had received her, the best education that money and bribery might buy. Now, with bright mind was left to languish, fed by nothing more than a single new book each fortnight. By now, Cassidy was in the habit of reading very slowly indeed. She shut her latest home and placed it upon the table next to her half-written letter to her brother. I never sound quite myself in these letters. How do you write from a distance to whom you once saw daily? And how do you write anything at all when your life has grown so, so dull? She decided to pen a few more sentences on how moved she felt after reading the book and how profoundly distressed she was by the ending of it. Family is important, but so too- Ow! 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 Kitty! That's my back you were scratching up! Family is important, but so too is recognizing the value of what you have before it is too late. If only the king had realized what a wonderful daughter he had. And I hope that you realize how much you are loved by me, your one and only sister. She paused, overcome by sheer feeling, and decided to keep that final bit to herself. It was too desperate for comfort. And princesses do not whine so. No, that won't do at all. How unbecoming. With a sigh, Cassidy stared at the crackling fire. She had more than enough firewood now to last until her next shipment of it. The sight reminded her of Alone. I wonder what Alone is doing at this very moment. She could not fathom the day-to-day -day life of such a mysterious personage was utterly beyond her imagination. Her curiosity so engaged, it was now impossible to ignore. 
And so the fair Cassidy resolved herself to take a walk and casually seek the other woman out. Perhaps I'll even stumble across where she lives today. Wouldn't it be exciting to surprise her at her home? Thinking nothing at all of how inconvenient, how overly forward and impertinent it might be, she departed immediately. At once outside, Cassidy took in a deep, blunt full of crisp forest air. How lovely it is today, hardly a cloud in the sky. She took measure steps in the forest, constantly scanning the area around her on the lookout for this elusive domicile. Might alone live in a cottage like mine? She is so elegant. I cannot imagine her doing housework. Then again, I could hardly imagine myself doing housework not so long ago. Oh, how times change a person. Cassidy reached her beloved wisteria tree before long and eagerly drank in the sight of it. She ran up to the tree and encircled it with her arms as if meaning to embrace it. Hello, dear tree. You are looking as lovely as ever today. There are certain someone sits not beneath your boughs this afternoon. She leaned to one side and then another, looking back around the tree and into the forest to see if she might spy a window or the bellowing of chimney smoke. Sadly, she could only make out more trees. I can't suppose that Aloha lives in a treehouse, does she? Certainly not. Oh, you popped up like nowhere. Do you live in the ground? Are you a hobbit? Are you a mole? Startled, Cassidy jumped, her foot catching unhappily on one of the tree's roots, sending her flailing forward. Careful. Alone's arm shot out at once, her vice like grip snaring the once princess just in time. Alone's touch was so cold, yet her movements incisive. Cassidy hard raised, she's a vampire! Was she truly worried for me? It took Cassidy several moments to regain her composure. Alone, too, looked a bit shaken. Thank goodness you arrived when you did, though, truth be told, if you hadn't startled me so, I would not have fallen. Is that so? I shall endeavor to be less frightening in future then. Oh dear, she may have mistaken my meaning. I was only trying to cover up my embarrassment. Okay, let's save this. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Return. Perhaps alone was joking. That is not necessary. Um, I'm gonna say she was joking. A second thought. Was that perhaps a joke? <laughs> You look much, you look much better with a smile, as do you. Still, how curious it is for us to be meeting here again. You come here often. I live nearby. What is curious about that? I'm merely saying that it's serendip, dip, what? That is what? Serendip, the bliss. It must be fate. Fate has nothing to do with it. I assure you. Oh, but it's so much more romantic to think of it as fate. I can think of nothing less romantic than fate. Question mark? Perhaps this is something not yet possible for you to understand. Don't speak as though you're much older and wiser than me. Eloan laughed a little. How old are you anyway? How old do you think? Isn't a person not supposed to ask that question? Isn't that kind of rude? Custody stared at Eloan. Gazing deeply into her eyes, as if she might find the other woman's secrets there. Older than I first thought, perhaps. A wise answer. Eloan tipped her head slightly, the motion seeming to indicate a desire to walk on. Cassidy was only too happy to comply. Together, the two of women strolled. Their time together was marked by companionable silence. Cassidy, never before a quiet girl, was desperate to feel it. But what conversation might pique Alone's interest was unclear. She peered shyly at Alone's face and profile. So striking and noble did it seem. She has the air of an aristocrat. What could someone like she be doing living in the forest? Then again, am I not in the same position? Perhaps it's something she finds difficult of. A nice gust of wind whistled through the clearing, causing Cassidy to shiver and rub her bare arms. The sun will be setting soon, and it will grow colder. Perhaps you should. It was then that the question Cassidy had been ruminating on over all afternoon burst forth. Would you like to come to my cottage? 
Alone appeared quite overcome. Is that wise? Whatever do you mean? How can you extend such an invitation to one such as me, whom you hardly know? You're entirely too trusting. I surprise at you. Two solitary women are to stick together out in these wilds. Besides, who else have I to invite? I am, that is, I sometimes feel quite lonely out here. Don't you? Alone turned her head slightly and gazed into the forest behind them as if peering at something only she could see. Loneliness, then. I see. Very well. I will take you up on your offer. The puzzled by Eloan's hesitation, Cassidy was overjoyed that her invitation had been accepted. There was a spring on her step as she led the other woman to her home. Oh, her cottage was really cute. It was only in front of the cottage that Cassidy suddenly understood what an impetuous thing it was what she, that she was doing. Is the house clean enough? That's what she worried about? She could not seem to recall when she had last swept and wearing out her bedding. Is this where you live? Yes. It's charming. Thank you. I wish I could take more credit for that. The house was here long before I arrived. Even the furniture is not truly my own. Still, it suits you. Thank you. Both stood by Lowen's reaction, Cassidy finally gained the courage to follow through. She opened the door wide, gesturing for the other woman to enter. It is quite spacious. You live here alone? That's right. It's not so bad. I don't have anyone to tell me what to do or where to go. I have a freedom now that I've never known before. Perhaps. But sometimes I believe that being tied down to something is easier. If you don't realize you're being strangled, it is, it's just a, a pleasant, lightheaded feeling. Hmm? I, I don't really understand. It's alright if you don't. Eloan walked slowly from one part of the room to the next, her fingertips ghosting over every surface. She looked to be seeking the essence of each object, taking it every minute, flaw and suffering its true nature. Cassidy wondered what Eloan might discover about her, if only she allowed it, if only she dared. It was unbearably quiet. Just then, Eloan came across the book Cassidy had finished reading. Oh, that's a book my brother sent to me. I get so frightfully bored here that these books have become my sanctuary. I'm expecting a new shipment soon. Your brother? Eloan was silent for a time, digesting the new information, and then her eyes fell on a half-finished letter, haphazardly placed next to the book. Cassidy followed her gaze, eyes wide. She leaped forward to snatch the letter away. How much had the other woman seen? She called in mortification. Your brother is far away from here? Yes. Is it beautiful, the place where you once both lived? I have not once seen it, it seen its equal. More beautiful than this cottage prison of yours? Cassidy could not hide her surprise at Lauren's poisonous choice of words, nor could she hide her sudden tears. And let's save again. Let's save again. We turn. Uh, poison face. No, could she hide her sudden tears. Excuse me? It's not like that. I'm gonna say it's not like that. She dried her eyes delicately, with but with determination. Now was not the time for tears. Things are complicated. It is not as clear cut as you seem to believe. Undoubtedly, the affairs of men are dark. However, all that I need to know is that he is there and you are here. That he is responsible for that difference can be inferred quite easily. You are a fast reader to be able to jump to such conclusions so swiftly. I. I'm not ha unhappy here, Eloan. Can you say that truly, with an unclouded heart? Eloan peered into Cassidy's eyes and her gaze held like two magnets pulling each other and closer and closer still. Yet Cassidy could not do it. She could not look Eloan in the eye and tell an untruth. Eloan looked to the window. It has gotten dark. Oh my, how rude of me. I have not offered you tea or any refreshment. Do not trouble yourself on my account. I must away. I did not mean to impose for so long. You have you are hardly in a position. You're kind and good. Cassidy's face lit up. Kind and good things do not survive long in a world such as ours. Ouch! And just as quickly as it had come, the sudden rush of delight left her. That was quite rude. Bowing her head, the other woman was out the door and gone 
leaving heart and confusion her wake. When she looked out the window to glimpse the same view that Lowen had just beheld, what Cassidy saw before her was but a bleak uncertainty. Without wisdom or experience, storms shall ill withered be, but when you are nearby, dear one, no storms can bother me. Day 3 Okay guys, that is a great place to stop. Um, I'm actually really fascinated by the story. Like, this story is, so far, it's really in-depth. And I want to know more. I want to read more of it. Like, I am totally caught up in the storyline. You know, because it's great. It's good. It's really good. You know, it, it, like, it's really, really good. Um, yeah, like, I'm excited to do a, less, a full let's play on this game, you know? Because I, I love games that has enriched storylines. I love games with deep stories, you know? And I love the, I love the dialogue. I love how it takes place in, like, princess and princess times. You know, I love that. I love that timeline, you know? So, I'm super... God, are you okay? Are you okay, Dale? Okay, anyways, I, yeah, love this game already. Anyways, like always, I'll see you guys next time. Toodles!